Welcome back today. Uh, I am doing something a little different. I've actually just dropped off a uh, patient and I'm returning uh, empty to Maseru. And en route is an airstrip that I've never been to. It's a Katsu Dam airstrip. And uh, my plan is to go there and check it out and uh, land there for the first time. I've never been there. And um, according to our rules here in Lesotho or with, uh, with the company, we are allowed to self-check out at airstrips at our class uh, one or two. And uh, Katse is, let's have a look quickly. Class one. So uh, I'm able to self-check out. Class one means uh, that it's nothing too uh, difficult. Um, it's a long runway. Um, not situated in a particularly difficult uh, area or anything like that. Um, but nevertheless, it should be fun and I'm excited to, uh, to go somewhere new. So we've got uh, two minutes to go until we're there. Just taken off Tabatseka about uh, two minutes ago. This is a very short uh, flight. And I can see the runway there in front of me. It's at uh, 7,000 foot, so I'm going to descend to uh, 8,000. Go overhead and uh, check it out. Um, it does not have wind socks because we use it so infrequently that uh, we don't go there enough to keep the wind socks uh, uh, up to date. But today is uh, pretty calm and uh, I had five knots of wind on the ground at my first destination, which was close to here, so I'm going to expect about five. So uh, Katsu Dam is a dam or a reservoir in Lesotho that's used for hydroelectric power for South Africa. In Lesotho, it's a shared uh, project, and this is the airstrip that's found uh, next to or pretty close to the dam. I guess it uh, used to be used pretty frequently when they were building the dam, uh, getting people here pretty quickly, but since the construction of the dam, which was uh, you know, decades ago, uh, it has not been used much. So here's the airstrip on my left. I'm gonna get slowed down a little so I can check it out. As you can probably see from the outside camera, it is a long airstrip. It's got markers on it. Um, there's a bit of a cliff on the uh, northern end of it. So the approach uh, might be uh, you know, interesting with a little bit of a bit of train. And there is someone who is racing their horse up and down the runway. That's pretty cool to see. And on my left here, you should be able to see the uh, dam wall for for cuts a dam. Okay, so my uh, what I'm going to do is just take a right hand turn here. It's always uh, interesting how uh, because in Lesotho we fly to the same places so often it's uh, rare for us to be able to land somewhere different. And uh, what's also weird is how quickly I can become, you know, a little, uh, little slow, a little behind the aircraft as things are new. So when you are repetitive and doing something the whole time, you get very uh, quick and uh, kind of do things without thinking. But now as soon as something's different, like a, a different runway, suddenly I'm uh, having to think more and uh, even though it's a, uh, an easy runway, or at least uh, classified as an easy runway, I still find myself a little bit behind the aircraft and, and just a little bit more, taking a bit more time to figure out what's going on. Okay, so here's the runway on my left. I just want to have another look and that guy is still uh, racing uh, his horse. Uh, so that should be interesting. But up overhead, I'm going to tell the flight follower that I'm going to be setting up for landing. 
and I'm at 80 knots, 8,000 foot, so that's a nice place to be as I get ready for it. I think I'm going to land uh, in a southerly direction. That'll be with the cliff face approaching, and hopefully this guy will now hear me uh, overhead uh, for the landing. So here I am turning over the runway. I'm a little bit high. I could lose that altitude. Runway condition looks really nice. Uh, seems like it was well built when they did it, so Estrepoint Lasso is checked. Right, my abort is down and breaking my midfield. Uh, if I'm not down and breaking my midfield, I will abort. Okay, so a lot of uh, this 3,000 foot long runway, so uh, uh, that's why we've got so much margin. That's why it's a class one. Um, it's in this valley, which is really nice. Nice looking. But just with that extra runway length, you know, this is uh, double the length of most of our runways. And so it just adds that much more uh, margin to what we're doing. That means if I mess anything up, I've got a lot of space to correct it and get myself back to where I need to be. I want a downwind leg here. Still at 8,000 foot, I'm going to start the descent. These hills here are looking really nice and green. And here I go, turn onto base leg. I'm going to add my third stage of flaps. Brakes checked, proper set. And that looks like a good, uh, good position for base. 70 knots. I don't see the horse and his rider. I think they're off at the top end. And turn it on to final approach here. There's a nice cliff, so a bit of an illusion there. But again, even if I land deep in this runway, that's not going to be an issue with the length that we have. So uh, turn it on to final approach. I've got uh, flaps and cow flaps checked. Green light for landing. Ground speed 72, so that's uh, good. Feels nice and stable, approach is stable. It's a nice and wide runway. And I have no problem with landing a bit deep here. Yeah, I'm just gonna try to put it down nicely. Bit of a... There we go. Bit of a uh, slope in the runway to start there, but that is really a nice... Uh, nice runway. Just having that width and extra length uh, makes things so much, uh, so much easier you know, compared to something that's uh, much narrower that we're used to and, and, and shorter. Uh, that extra margin just opens up so many uh, possibilities gives you a lot of uh, leeway to make a mistake and still be able to correct it uh, in time to, to land safely. All right, so this uh, at the top here does increase in the slope, which would be really nice to take off on, but unfortunately the uh, condition of it is uh, just a bit too rocky. Uh, we had somebody land recently to check that out, and uh, it is not suitable for us to to uh, take off down, unfortunately, that would be pretty fun. But here we are, turned around, and I'm going to take off that direction, and then uh, head back to Masera. So, get myself set up, and go through the uh, takeoff checklist. Okay, so my guess is uh, 140. Actually, I'm going to leave it on uh, 140, so uh, that's two hours 20. My caps are secured, my drains are done, my selector is on the right until I get to 130. My controls, I've got my flaps set to 20, right is up, left is down, left is up, right is down. My control, flap, trim, check, instruments are set, 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 and set. Mags and prop, I, uh, yeah, let's check mags. 
left and right, back to both prop set, make sure it's set. All right, my abort, so we've got a long runway when we have an abort uh, point on a long runway, it's sometimes a little bit more difficult to uh, work out um, because you need to, you know, often you might be airborne um, <coughs> and then still reaching your abort point, so you've got to kind of think of that. But what I'm seeing here is kind of a slope on the runway. I don't have a halfway marker, so it's hard to judge my abort point, but I do see a nice bush on the left there. Uh, that looks kind of in the middle of the dip. And that's just going to be a good place for me to make that decision. So uh, my board point will be the bush on the left. I'll board if I don't get a good power check or a speed check by the second marker. So I should be able to see the, the markers. Get a, I think I can see it over there, speed check by second marker. If I'm airborne past the board point with an engine failure, I'll continue with 6Gs. If there's runway, I'll land. Otherwise, I'll continue with uh, uh, the 6Gs gliding at 65. Grass is going to be think off to the left if I'm high enough, uh, then possibly into the valley to the right. Then gas, gab, guts, and get out. Okay, so quickly get my uh, time on here. we we'll take off. Uh, what do we got? 40. Okay, time check. So time, passengers, brakes, and window checked. We are ready for the takeoff. Power check. Speed check. Continue. Flaps up, car flaps up, power set. Make sure set engine instruments, nav instruments, performance instruments, fuel caps, passengers, radio call complete. That was confusing. There was a, a road on the uh, runway that around halfway curved and went off. <laughs> and it uh, it uh, made it hard for me to just remember where the center line was and uh, not, try, <laughs> not try and turn it all but with the uh, runway. That sounds stupid, but when you're uh, taken off and a few things are happening at once, it's, uh, you know, easy to get confused, at least for me. So he has uh, cuts the dam, just flew over the wall there, and uh, the water level is still low despite having a lot of rain, but uh, I think that's because they've opened the uh, hydroelectric uh, tunnels to get uh, the turbines going a little more for uh, electricity. So. The level stays pretty low, but I think it's just because they're uh, actively using that water. Besides the uh, hydroelectric power in Lesotho, they also uh, do some uh, trout farming in this uh, uh, reservoir. So they uh, have some cages. I can't see any here. I think they're up the uh, other side. But they also um, you know, have some cages with uh, with trout farming, which is uh, one of fairly small export, but uh, at least it's something from the Sutu that uh, is sent to the rest of the world. Okay, I'm setting up my. Uh, This area back at my destination here, start to climb back up to 10.5. I'm at 8,000, so I've got a ridge in front of me that I'm going to need to get over. Otherwise, I'm uh, heading back. I'm 
once again, thanks for joining me. Um, I hope you have been enjoying the videos. Let me know which uh, kind of videos you like most. I really enjoy doing these technical ones where I get to talk about uh, the aeroplane and, and all that stuff. Thanks for watching, appreciate it, and uh, see you next time. Cheers.